Hello, gentlemen. Uh, Hello, Mark. Mark, another disappointing day for Chelsea. Is there anything you can take positively away from that res- that game? No. <laughs> I was trying. I was looking for a positive, Mark. Just no. <laughs> <laughs> no, a- absolutely not. Um, um, I've been I've been listening um in the car since I left the game. Um, and I've now had a chance to see the um the red card as well. It's not even not even a foul that then red card. But but he, and he he'll get that removed. But that that doesn't matter. Um, if we had had eleven, we'd have lost three 0 instead of one nil. Um, <laughs> So, but the thing is, and it was on the, the previous show, and I don't know if you guys have the same opinion, but the idea that somehow this has nothing to do with the manager, that is what gets my goat, I have to say. Uh, the manager who talks to the players every single day, who trains them, who motivates them, who picks the team and the substitutes, and in this particular case, leaves a Champions League winning England left back on the bench, and it's nothing to do with the manager. Excuse me? Well, Mark, that's interesting. It's good. Let's, let, well, let's get let's get a former Premier League's manager's opinion on that. That's that's why Pards is here. Well, you know, I'm, I can't defend you know what's going on there because it just doesn't look right. You know, all my Chelsea fans are saying exactly the same as you, Mark. You know, there looks no cohesion. There looks like you know they're a group of players that not sure what they're doing, what's happening, who are we pressing, aren't we pressing, you know, and I understand that that questions that ultimately will come back to the manager. manager, You can forget about recruitment after about four or five (laughs) games. You know, it's coming back to the manager. You've got to pull the players, it's on you. Yeah, absolutely. And you've got to inspire them and you've got to get into them. And unfortunately at the moment, for whatever reason, uh, some of the very, very talented players that you know are there, Mark, are not producing. They're just not delivering. Yeah. No, 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 they're not. You're absolutely right. And um, and uh, he's got three games. He's got three games left, and they're nasty games. Away at Fulham, away at Burnley, who should have won like 4-1 yesterday, and home versus Arsenal. He's not getting to the home versus Arsenal if the Fulham and the Burnley games mm. go, go sideways. I'm, I'm telling you, uh, uh, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you the real killer here. The real killer here today is a kid He's one of the best players in the world. If he was English, that he'd be in the papers every single week, but he's Argentinian, so he's hated. He's one of the best players in the world who's played every single second that he could possibly have played for Chelsea, Enzo. And today, for the first time, his body language was off. And I tell you what, that kid downs tools, Mopo is out 30 seconds later. Mm. I'm I'm telling you that now. Uh, but there's all kinds of managerial missteps here. You know, Thiago Silva, my my youngest, Big Fred, he plays football at, at, a, at, a, high, at, at a high at a high level, and we have these conversations like Dad. And I guess I know, I know, Thiago Silva was 40. Every single player in that team is allowing for that. It's not perceptible. It's imperceptible. But they can't push up. They can't leave leave stuff behind. He shouldn't be playing. He should not be playing. And then, and then shoving Colwell out to left back. It's the whole. And here's the most controversial point that I've got to make, and you're all going to hate me for this, and Chelsea fans will hate me for this. Conor Gallagher. Conor Gallagher. He's like, you know, you know, he's a, he's got great attitude. He, he gives everything he's got. He's in there. He's out of there. But you don't send a a guy with boxing gloves to crack a safe. <laughs> 